Carolyn Doobie here, and today I'm destashing, which has led me to something that's making me very happy. I had a whole bunch of these paints, and they're wonderful paints, and I treasured them, and when I bought them, I thought they were special, and so I was nervous to use them, and lo and behold, 20 years later, well, maybe it was 15, somewhere between 15 and 20 years later, they've dried up. In all fairness, I think that's uh, kind of a long time to expect a paint that's been open and used some to actually still be workable. So nothing against this paint. It's beautiful. But I had all of these. And I got to say, when I had a whole bunch of these and I had these lids, that's when it struck me. I have a whole bunch of circles. Now you may say, what's the big deal with circles? Well, seeing as how I cannot freehand draw a perfectly round circle, nor am I willing to work that hard to make it, seeing something like this totally got me going with an idea for the jelly plate. So I'm going to show you how I made a texture tool, a pattern making tool for the jelly plate using a whole bunch of lids that I saved after I finished up some paints. All right, so what am I gonna use to do this? I've got some super heavy gel medium here, and I'm gonna spread it around with a catalyst blade tool. That way it's something that I can easily get the glue off of, because it's really what this stuff is doing, is acting as my glue. You can use any kind of glue that you've got, and I recommend a heavier, thicker piece of cardboard for this if you're planning on using it more than just a couple of times. And I'm really, really excited about this, so I found the thickest, heaviest piece of cardboard I could, which means I broke apart a box that I got in the mail that was super sturdy. Then I am just gonna start putting these lids right on there. Now some of them have pieces of paper on them. At one point that was actually colored paper. That way I could tell what color was in the jar. So I'm pulling that off just to make sure that I've got the best shot at getting these things to adhere into the glue. And I'm gonna put them on, yep, I'm gonna speed it up here because, well, you get the idea of how this part works. And the cool part about this is because this is super wet still, I can kind of wiggle them around and get them positioned the way that I want. Then I'm going to let them dry. And since I'm doing this in the evening, it was really easy for me to just set this aside overnight so it can dry. So here's what it looks like all dry. I've got different kinds of paper here. I've got some index cards. I've got some copy paper. I'm not exactly sure which one I'm going to go with. And I've got a bunch of fluid acrylic paints from Deco Arts. Got my brayer, my jelly plate. I am ready to start playing. Now I'm not sure which color I wanted to use, so I brought out the whole rainbow. All right, so let's hit this eight by 10 jelly plate with a little bit of paint. I'm gonna brayer it around. Do I have to fill the entire plate? No, it's not like there's a rule about that. Cleaning off my brayer on some scrap paper over there and then bringing in my circles giving it a little bit of pressure and wiggle there to make sure that it's picking up the paint that's on there. And I'm positioning it in different ways so that I get this very, very random circle pattern. Now the paper felt a little funny to me as I was trying to get this print, but I knew time is of the essence. So rather than mess with it, I just started to take the print. Then when I pulled it up, I realized why it felt funny. I actually had two pieces of paper there. Yeah, not a big deal. I'm just gonna use that second piece of paper to see if I can get a ghost print from it. And not much of a ghost print, a little bit of one, but not much. And I find that happens to me with fluid acrylics because I pick up so much of the paint on the first pull. Well, let's do it again with a color that's gonna go with that first print because, well, you're gonna see what I'm gonna do with that. I'm spreading that color around and cleaning that brayer off and falling in love with that brayer paper over there putting my circle stamp stencil texture maker thingy, whatever we're gonna call this, it's not really a stencil. Why did I say that word? Anyway, bunch of circles all over the place with that. And then I'm gonna come in with my first print and I'm gonna drop it right on the jelly plate, but that's not gonna matter. And what I'm gonna do is have circle upon circle creating my fingers crossed. It's gonna be a really complex looking pattern and it is. So I've got the different circles working together but we're not done yet. Remember that cleanup paper that didn't have much on it? I'm gonna use that to pick up this next ghost. Now there's not gonna be a lot on there, but look how that so nicely builds up together. All the circles, and you know what? You can even, if you've got ink on those still, or paint, whatever you wanna call it, you can also use it as a stamp and press it down in places. Well, I'm in the mood to build up some layers, so I'm gonna come in with a nice soft yellow, carefully positioning dots upon my jelly plate. And do you know why I did dots instead of a big swoosh of paint? 
no real reason. I just kind of felt like it. So either anyhow, any, any who, anyhow, any way you get paint on that jelly plate, it works. So putting my circles into this, creating that texture in it, and flipping it over just for some variety so that make sure that everything doesn't line up, or I should say nothing lines up. And then I'm going to bring in the ghost print paper, the one that has little bits on it. Well, this time I'm going to give it a full coating of color with a fresh print instead of a ghost print this time. And so when I lift it up, fingers crossed, we should be able to see all three of the different patterns and textures going on. And we do. I'm so excited by the ghosty, watercolory, circle-y, well, however you would describe this. Well, let's push the line a little bit farther here. I mean, I'm basically using junk as a tool for the jelly plate. So I'm going to bring in some of this orange color and I'm going to create a very, very, very thin layer of paint on here. So there is not much paint on there at all. I, of course, I'm going to put use that junk to make some circles all around on that paint. And then I am going to bring on the original print that had a bunch of layers on it and see what happens when I put just a very, very thin or small layer of paint on it. See what kind of color transfers with that. Now this is either going to make some really neat accents or I'm going to get the ugliest, muddiest color I've ever created. So who knows which one it's going to be. Fingers crossed that this turns out okay. Of course it's going to turn out okay. It's paper and paint. If it doesn't come out the way I want, I can always add another layer. And it did. Just a really, really subtle little touch there by using just a small amount of paint. Well, here are some close-up shots of both of the papers created in this video so you can see how much texture was captured with those paint lids in the layers of paint. Well, thanks for joining me for today's play. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up or a like. And of course, if you'd like to see more of my videos, and I will tell you that I've got one coming soon using the brighter paper that I created during this, then subscribe to my YouTube channel and you won't miss a thing. Want to know more of what I'm up to? Pop on over to my blog at acolorfuljourney.com. Over there, I've got blog posts, of course, as well as a newsletter with free downloadable goodies, goodies, goodies waiting for you. Thanks for being a part of this colorful journey.